Okay, my friends, here it is. The Monday morning Thrive stream at the Thrive Like a Viking headquarters. A little bit late today. Sorry, no problem. Uh, <clears throat> it's very cloudy, very overcast today. So sorry if the lighting is not uh, exactly correct, but it just is what it is. So guys, let me know where you're at. Uh, what is up with you? Are you still doing the breathing exercises? Are you still doing the cold training? Yes, uh, it's going to become a little more challenging as it warms up. But I have converted a chest freezer into an ice bath. And so... Uh, it works really well. If you guys are serious about it, then you can just get an old ice bag, uh, old chest freezer off of Am uh, off of uh, marketplace, and then convert it into a ice bath. It's actually really simple. It's just it's kind of a lot of work, uh, like time, you know, several hours involved. But other than that, you can get an ice bath that stays ice cold um, for just a. Uh, 400, 450 bucks uh, all in with all the parts. That's about what mine was. As opposed to if you want to try to buy one pre-made, they start at about $5,000. So yeah, if you guys are serious about it, you got to do it into the summertime. Vera Witch Lady, hello my friend, says hi from Belgium. Pam, hello my friend, says much love. Yes, Pam from South Africa. Ms. T is here, says send in love and light and peace. Looking forward to this. Connective energy this morning. Yes, that's ultimately what it's about is the connective energy. Uh, oh, wait, we got to do the sound check real quick. Motivation day. Okay, what did I say? What did I say? Just got to make sure we got the sound right because we're live. And uh, let's see who we're here. So guys, we're going to have a great talk today because uh, we're going to do a deep dive into motivation and where it comes from. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> you're not going to be hearing this kind of stuff uh, uh, much anywhere else because we're going to go to the root. We're going to go to the root. It's not going to be like, okay, here, do these eight things uh, to, to supercharge your, your blah, blah, blah. Uh, no. The, the, the hustle culture, it's not going to be just a regurgitation of all the things you see on Instagram and all that kind of stuff. No, we're going to go way deeper and we're going to look at it from a, uh, the standpoint of the ultimate observer. How about this? Um, let us see here. Okay, good. Val, Pam, thank you. Uh, said motivation day. So the sound check is working. Great. Um, Jerry, good to see you here, my friend, says, thinking about the chest back into the shower today. Yes. Uh, the chest freezer? Yes. The chest freezer. If you ever wanted to do that, uh, I could, if you wanted to do a chest freezer ice bath, I could, if you got the chest freezer, I would be willing to come down and uh, convert it for you so that I can film it and make a video about it because I didn't film mine because I, I, that's a rule of mine that I would never make a video about some doing something if I haven't done it before. You know, it's my first time doing it. So, no, I, I didn't record any of it, uh, even though it worked out great. But, yes, if you ever wanted to do that, I'd be willing to do that so we can get a video about it. So, guys, uh, yeah, the motivation, we're going to talk about that. We're going to uh, do a little meditation here in just a moment as soon as we get um, settled in. And... Uh, we're going to talk about what sabotages motivation, but also how to use a lack of motivation as a feedback mechanism. And what does that mean as far as actualizing your ideal life? Yes. Uh, okay. So Muddy Paw says, good morning from cloudy Texas, but sending sunshine and hugs. The cloud must be all the way up here because it is, uh, it is cloudy. Yeah. Um, but guys, oh wait, I was just going to tell you everything that I have planted already, but that's, hmm, don't know why it's messing up, uh, it says unable to connect, hmm, well, we'll just have to see, we'll just have to go with it, 
you know, when it's cloudy and it's windy, the sun doesn't, or the, the internet doesn't want to work for some reason. Uh, I, I'm not sure. But yeah, creative soil. I lived in a teepee in Northern California. They're pretty cool, but uh, the trade-offs, you know, there's trade-offs to each dwelling type. Uh, and the trade-off to a teepee, having the big hole in the top and everything, is its mobility. That, that really, and if you're not utilizing the mobility, it doesn't really make sense. There's much better, there's much better um, uh, dwelling structure designs if you're not mobile. That's the main thing. Or if you don't have a fire in it. If, if you have a teepee and you're not moving it and you, you don't have a fire in it, then you're totally wasting all of its uh, advantages, really. It's just cool to live in. So uh, that's what I learned. Yeah, and that's why I got a. Uh, th uh, that's why I got like an old military uh, uh, tent. You know, like a big cabin tent. That's what I ended up getting. Uh, whoa, Graham says you're back. The internet went funny here too. Whoa. Yeah, this must be a solar flare or something like this. Buffering. Yep. Uh, okay, so. Let's see here if we got any more questions. Then we're going to get into the meditation. Uh, that's okay. Let us see. North Central Illinois. Hello, Teresa. Carol Fago. Yes. Says, hi, uh, I am 78. And it was Nate that motivated me to exercise twice a day, six days a week. I feel great. That is music to our ears, my friend. Wonderful. 78, not a problem, guys. I met people in my travels that were well into their 90s and full of life and full of mobility uh, and still had tasks in their life. Uh, and you know what a lot of it was, what a lot of it comes from? One, that they never stopped moving. They, they always were doing stuff. They never were just sitting there on their rocking chair watching TV like Americans do. They, there was no television. In, in these villages and stuff. So they were constantly doing things, even if that's, uh, well, and then the second thing is that they always had a purpose. The elders, even the old people well into their 90s, 100 or plus, they're so old that nobody knows how old they are because they're the oldest person, so they don't really know. Uh, they just say, oh, they're over 100, you know. But they always had a purpose. They always, even, even the super elderly people were like watching the kids or grinding wheat or always they had a purpose. And so I think that those two things, always moving and have a purpose to the tribe, to the village, to the community, those things keep them mobile and young, definitely. Uh, then when I come back to America, where we, are, where, where we have the highest standard of living in the world, yada, yada, then you see people at 60 years old looking old and elderly and and just 65 years old uh, i mean some of them i'm not talking about all of them but just looking really weathered before their time it is all about lifestyle and purpose yes culture so anyways we could have our own talk about that we should have a talk about that someday because there's a lot i could say on that aging before your time and also 96 years young something like that Okay, <clears throat> let's see here. Um, okay, we're going to start the meditation here in just a moment. But Teresa says, I have a chest freezer fixing to convert in the workout room. Nate, your visit and help would be amazing. That would be cool. Uh, that would definitely be cool. It, uh, Texas is a ways away from me. Uh, even if it's not in person. Oh, yes, we could definitely do a video conference. I, I would be willing to do that, definitely. Okay, guys, so let us uh, drop in together wherever you're at. Just uh, sit in a comfortable position and make sure that the uh, spine is straight. We're going to have us a brief meditation. And this is the type of meditation that you can do throughout your day-to-day -day life. And... It doesn't have to be a big event. It can just be a light little meditation where you are reconditioning the mind. This is the most important thing. So together, let us take a few deep conscious breaths, breathing fully in. Hold. Let it go. 
again. Fill the lungs. Hold. Let it go. Last one. Breathe deeply as you can. Hold. Let it go. And now relax the body. Deeply relax the body. Make sure the spine is straight. The eyelids are gently closed. The jaw muscle is not tight. Many of you are clenching your jaw without even realizing it. Relax the face muscles, relax the neck and the shoulders. With each exhalation, you can sink deeper and deeper into the relaxation. Relax the chest and the abdomen, the arms, the hands, completely relax. The lower body, the legs, the calves, the knees, deeply relax everything. And now relax the mind. There is no need to think of anything in particular. Just observe how the body is breathing. Observe how the body is sitting, the posture. Breathing in, breathing out. Allow the mind to become still and quiet. If thoughts come into the mind, don't bother with them, don't worry. Just observe and come back to the breathing. If your mind is very active, you can focus, in particular, only on the sensation of air as it flows past your nostrils. Into the body and out of the body. Breathing in. Breathing out. For many of you that practice consistently, your mind has already dropped into the meditative state. Your heart rate has slowed down. Your blood pressure has reduced. Your mind has become quiet. The chatterbox has shut off for a moment. Feel how wonderful it is to be in this state present, alert, alive. For those of you that have been practicing for some time, you can expand your awareness from just the sensation of air as it flows in and out of the body you can simultaneously become fully aware of the inner energy field of the body. Feel the energy as it flows throughout the body. You can begin in the hands 
it's easiest to feel the energy in the hands. Maybe your hands are gently on your lap, open towards the sky to receive the energies. Feel the wave of electromagnetic current, life force energy that flows through the body with each breath. Breathing in and flood the body with the energy. Breathing out circulates the energy throughout the body. Feel how the breath is not just an exchange of air, it is an exchange of energy with the atmosphere and the earth and the cosmos. Breathing in, I am breathing in the atmosphere. Breathing out, I am nourishing the atmosphere. Breathing in, the earth is sustaining my life. Breathing out, I am sustaining the earth. The life support system of this planet. As you breathe in and out, feel the energy in the body like an electrical current, a wave. At first, this may be dull and difficult to discern, but with practice, you will quickly become more sensitive to energies. And the more you practice, the more you will feel energy everywhere, pulsating with life. It is important that we don't use our mind like a television. We're not trying to visualize anything. We are just feeling, we are experiencing it. For many of you that have been consistently practicing, intrusive thoughts don't even enter the mind anymore. This is a wonderful feeling. Together, let us take a few deep conscious breaths, breathing fully in, Hold, and let it go. Again, breathing fully in. Hold, and let it go. 
Last one. Fill the lungs as deeply as you can. Hold. Hold. Let it go. become more and more in tuned with what is happening in the body. The subtle energy fields that permeate the body and the atmosphere. And the more that you practice this, the more finely tuned your instrument of perception will become. You will be able to feel more and more subtle energies. It begins in the body, yes. But as you sharpen the tool of your awareness, you will be able to feel energy fields permeating through the entire body. You'll be able to feel the energy fields of other people as well, more and more sensitive. More sensitive, but less inclined to absorb that energy from the other people as well. This is very important. Many people can naturally feel a, that they can naturally receive other people's energy. They can naturally feel this, but without cultivation, they're like a wide open gate. They, they don't have the ability to choose which energies they take on and which energies they absorb. So these people can often feel very drained and they can feel very overloaded and overwhelmed when they, especially when they hang out with certain people, certain types of people that I call energetic vampires. So through the cultivation, you learn how to conserve your energies, how to redirect your energies and the energies of others as they enter your fields. Now, at first, this might just sound like magic, or it might just sound like kind of nonsense, like, oh, okay, there's energy fields around us, and oh, yeah, okay, I get it. Uh, but <laughs> the more that you practice, I assure you, you will begin to feel this, and you will know beyond any doubt that you will just see the way energy works in this realm, and you will know. And then through working with it in your own body first, in your own experience, directly, then you will know how to control the energies in a loving way. And you can redirect them. And you can learn to harness the power. So all of these things come with the practice, guys. Uh, without the practice, without the practices, um, you're just kind of drifting along, hoping for the best to just kind of happen to you. But uh, once you learn that, okay, I have to take the reins of my own life and I have to, uh, the responsibility falls solely upon me for my experience. Um, then you can say, okay, well, up until this point in life, I've just sort of drifted aimlessly maybe, but, uh, and I've just kind of let things happen to me. But now that I see, and I've been directed and guided to the practices, now I see that uh, I can take the reins and I can learn to redirect energies that for some of us, the energy flows really strong through you. And uh, this was the case with me. And it was like a raging inferno inside of me. And it, uh, I, didn't, I had no idea how to control or redirect any of this energy. And, but it, it brought me out into the world exploring all different countries and cultures and parts of the world it brought me out there um but it also brought me to my knees eventually and so uh 
the fire can either consume you or you can learn to use it as a tool of alchemical transformation. So, <clears throat> hello, Miss KC. Good to see you here. Spring break. Happy to catch a live. Yes, yes, spring break. So, guys, um, the thing here, okay, this kind of leads us into the topic of motivation. You guys um, uh, recommended that we discuss motivation. So, to you guys, uh, I want to hear from you. What is motivation in your mind what what do you, what does that mean when it says oh i wish i had more motivation or i wish that i wish i could just figure out how to get motivated how many of us say that and um so i'm gonna wait for a couple of answers from you guys so do you feel motivated in life do you feel highly motivated in life and if so what's your secret um and, or do you not feel motivated in life? How many of you feel just an overall lack of motivation in your life? And what does that mean? <clears throat> Shawnee says, she's straightforward, says, I am not motivated. <laughs> okay, well, we will talk about that here. Uh, Shawnee says, an urge inside to achieve. Okay, an urge to achieve. That's a good way to put it, yes. Uh, uh, it's an urge to achieve, to do, to do things. Yes. Um, so the uh, Sophia says meditation feels like God's cradle. Thank you for taking us there. That's a great way to put it, guys. I love it. Um, Teresa says yo-yo. I feel like I feel like a yo-yo, huh? Whoa, up and down, up and down. Uh, Ms. T says stamina, a drive, a force. Okay, yes, stamina, very important. Uh, Pam says meditation helps to motivate me. Val says ability to get up and do. Also, what is important, what to do. Yep, not motivated enough. Not in winter for sure. Yes, Kenny says uh, desires that are wanting to manifest. That's a good way to put it. We're going to talk into that here in a moment. Graham says, do something every day that improves your life, whether it's a little or a lot. That's a wonderful philosophy. Absolutely. That's a wonderful uh, philosophy. And if you guys are doing the practices, then we are already doing that. We are, we are doing something every day that builds. We, something that builds strength, uh, something that builds character, something that builds finances, you know, something that builds every day. This is important. So, um, Terry says, uh, used to be highly motivated, got burnt out a couple years ago and still have not been able to regain it fully since. Okay. So Sherry Sinclair says, I am currently accepting that I am codependent. And with that comes non self motivated yet easily motivated by others. Ooh, there we go. I like that one too. Yeah. If you are realizing that and you're feeling that then, uh, yes. So uh, codependency, oh man, we should do a whole, we should do a whole episode on codependency sometime. Um, so Miriam Meadows says, universal energy and my collaboration equals genuine motivation for me. Yes, okay. I like that. Brian says, I used to be motivated by fear and now I'm motivated by joy. There we go. Okay, guys, so these are some great answers, um, and these, these are, I mean, you guys are all pretty clued in anyways, so, uh, but for most of the people, especially in this current culture, we are, um, you know, the, there is the, how many of you know the, the rise and grind kind of culture, the toxic, the hustle culture, I call it toxic hustle culture, where they, uh, it's really been implanted into people's mind that the purpose of your life, especially Americans, guys, the purpose of your life is to build your business, build finances, to achieve more money, to get more cars, to get more houses, to get more, 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 like a cancerous growth, just more, more, more. Doesn't, they don't even know what for just more. And so <laughs> this has been implanted into the mind. And so uh, if, you, if you don't got 12 different uh, uh, sources of passive income by the time you're 20, then you're, you're, you're left in the dust. You know, all of this, most people are like, well, <laughs> they don't have anything like that. OK, so they're like, why am I not motivated? Well, why am I not motivated? Why am I not as motivated as this guy on Instagram who's, who's 22 years old and drives a Lamborghini and stuff like this? Why am I not? You know, that's just human nature. OK, that's human nature. Uh, 
So how does how does this happen? Let us just take a step way back and, and say, okay, what is motivation? You know, in, in, in the current, what motivates us? So there is a it, the subconscious mind within us is the uh, receiver of the energy, receiver of the information. We talk about the subconscious a lot, okay? And uh, it is always watching. It is always watching, and it is always formulating the. Um, belief system. It's always formulating the desires. It's it's formulating what are our opinions. All of these things that are below our conscious threshold are coming from the subconscious mind, which draws upon a much bigger bank of knowledge. Remember this from the previous discussions. So in this modern culture, our subconscious mind has been totally hijacked totally hijacked with television, with magazines, with even radio to a degree because, uh, def I mean, definitely radio, definitely songs as well. It's all about implanting the image in the mind. This is how it works. Listen, this is the ultimate, the foundation of how it works. The law of confirmation, the internal experience or image will create in its way an external experience that confirms that it's the law of confirmation this is the root you have to understand this at its truth this is literally true now if you haven't consciously observed this and experienced this over and over in your life yet then you can reflect on it and and, and you can see in the past and you can look but when you learn to consciously use these things then you will see that this is how it works so it all has to do with the image that is in the mind. Everything comes back to that, the image that is held in the mind. And so the most dominant image that is held in the mind will create itself to some, in some way, to some effect, to confirm in the, in the external experience. The internal landscape will eventually become the external landscape. And so people... Uh, they, with the capital T, you know, I mean, I'm talking advertisers, I'm talking, uh, uh, let alone the, the, they, you know, that we're talking about running society and all of this guy, I mean, they're very well versed in all of this. They understand what motivates people is the image in the mind. So if they can implant the image that they want, uh, in the mind, then they will have you motivated to do these things. So, uh, when you watch television, it, Every single thing is programming. It is programming the mind to want these things. So why are people motivated for bigger houses and bigger cars? Or why are people motivated to get pumped up lips and, and all, all kinds of cosmetic surgeries and stuff? Uh, why are people motivated to do what they are doing? Uh, and in the current culture, it is all from the images that have been implanted into their mind. They are unconsciously doing these things to confirm the inner image that has been stenciled into their brain. And it, it is unconscious. They're not aware that they are doing this. They're, the people are not aware that this is how it happens. This is how it works. And so they will say things like, oh, my, my belief is this or that. And, and they will tell you the narrative that they've been fed. Or, oh, my, you know, I want this and that. Uh, uh, they want a certain thing. Uh, okay, well, why? Uh, it's been implanted into their mind. Uh, so advertisers use this all the time. Uh, political uh, uh, parties and things use this all the time. And this is what motivates, is the image that is in the mind. Everything else stems from that. I know it might seem like, well, no, I... I, I what motivates me is is this particular desire or this particular thing. It is still all comes back to the image that is in the mind. So you have to go to the root and you have to take control of the image that is in the mind. So the very foundation of, of setting up a whole new life that is motivated uh, towards what you actually want instead of what has been stenciled into your mind, it, all, it starts with a detox. You have to detoxify yourself and deprogram yourself. You have to deprogram yourself. This took me some time, but the very first thing to do is to cut off the source of programming. 
get the TV out of the house. I know most, some people are like, what? They couldn't imagine their life without TV. What am I going to do all day? Guys, you got to get that thing out. You got to get the programming out of the mind. And you have to stop watching shows and sitcoms and all this kind of stuff. Product placements, every show and sitcom. and every, It's motivating you towards what the advertisers and the they want. This is literally true. I, I cannot stress this enough. And once you detox for some time, then you have to begin to reprogram your own mind with what you want. And how do you do that? Repetition. Repetition, repetition. That's the key. Especially the older that we get, repetition is, is the main source. Uh, you can also sort of hypnotize yourself. But by doing this, you are implanting repeatedly the image that you want in the mind. And this is going to uh, elicit in you feelings of motivation towards achieving this particular thing. So, <clears throat> yes, Ms. T says, we hustle, hustle, hustle for what? To make more money, to buy more things we don't need and, not, and does not even serve us. Meanwhile, we pay no attention to what's important, which is ourself. Yes, absolutely, guys. Absolutely. Uh, Kenny Green says, retirement is another lie that motivates you to a dead end road. Yes, yes, definitely. And most people will, retirement is like, the, okay, so the, it's led into people's mind that retirement is when all the rewards will happen for your years of sacrificing yourself to the man. Your years of enslavement are going to all be worth it in some golden years. And, and they'll show in, you know commercials and stuff where everything's in slow motion and they've got that, that uh, the hairs flowing in the wind and all this stuff. Enjoy your retirement and blah, blah, blah. No, it's not, it's not like that. People sacrifice their whole lives for this. And so they're motivated to do this. We have to understand deeply what motivation is and what motivates us. Um, so <clears throat> now, once you have gone to the source, once you have gone to the root, and you've gone through a, a detoxification process, a, a deprogramming, getting as much as possible their images out of your mind. And it starts by realizing, by going within and seeing what images are there. And just observing and observing. Every time you bring them into the light of consciousness, they dissolve. Their power dissolves by the power of your conscious presence. And so uh, then... <clears throat> uh, okay, I lost my train of thought for a second because I'm reading you guys' comments. <laughs> um, Ms. T says, most people die shortly after retirement. Uh, yeah, man, my grandpa is a prime example of that. He worked at a factory for like 48 years at BF Goodrich and worked his just unbelievable amount of hours. Nobody hardly ever saw him. And then he retired and immediately his health just boom. He, he was on dialysis. And then the next 10 years, uh, the last 10 years of his life was just nonstop medical appointments, prescriptions and doctors and hospitals and dialysis and all this until he just died. I mean, I mean, just crazy. Um, Kathy title says, our projector needs to be stronger than their projector. Yes. And we can do this through the repetition. So remember the visioneering stuff that we used to do that, that I've talked about. So this is really what it boils down to. So do the visioneering, do the visioneering over and over and over and over and over. It doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't have to be strenuous. You just formulate the image and you recall it as often as possible. And then, so long as you have detoxified to a reasonable degree and you implant your own image of the thriving, healthiest version of yourself, and what we're talking about, uh, what we are talking about here of the image, the, vi the visioneering, you have to, I'll just briefly summarize it, 
but you have to etch out, you have to d develop, you have to draw in the eye of your mind the image of the healthiest, most ideal, perfected version of yourself. You don't have to think of, of a particular, anything super particular, just leave it sort of vague, abounding health. And you can see the radiance. You have to see this person and how healthy they are and how happy they are and how content they are. And watch the ones on visioneering. I, I go deeply into it. Okay. And so after that, then you have to let go. You have to surrender to the creative power of the universe. And you have to say, okay, that is what is coming for me. That version of myself, that is what is coming for me. And then you have to not worry about the how. This is the biggest thing that takes a lot of people off guard and that is the difficult thing to, um, to digest is that you have to, once you get the what, the healthiest, strongest version of yourself, the how becomes not so relevant because there's no way that you could possibly understand the over this, the incredible, immense complexity of how the universe works as far as time, how it doesn't exist, how that uh, everything is already here now. So the mind cannot comprehend this much more than a concept. It can only be felt and experienced. And so when you begin to live in this way, through programming yourself, all of a sudden your motivations change and you will feel inspired to do things that you're not really sure why, but you have to have the uh, understanding, you have to have the confidence that the image, that the universe has your greatest uh, potential, your greatest um, version of yourself, that's what it wants as well. So when we do this, then we can see that certain things that we are not motivated to do are not in line with our highest potential, the highest version of ourself. Now, what do I mean? For example, listen to this, guys. This is what I'm talking about. Um, several years ago, well, a couple of years ago, uh, I was writing a book about my travels. Um, it, it was about the 10 years of traveling and living on the mountain and things getting crazy and the collapse and all that kind of stuff. It, it was like a, a memoir, but like a novel. Uh, and I was 90,000 words into the first draft of this book. I am that far into it. Uh, and I was, this was about three years ago and I was really struggling to motivate myself. I mean, every day I was like, okay, oh man. So I, I had to get, you know, the timing system, uh, uh, the timer and stuff. I, I was using the Pomodoro technique and I was like, oh, dreading it. But man, I was forcing myself to do it because this is what I, I had in my mind. I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to write this book. And so, oh. I'm writing it, I'm writing it, and it was just a freaking struggle, okay? Uh, but then um, I got to the point where I said, okay, I need to examine this. I need to see why am I struggling so deeply for this? Why do I feel so lack of motivation? Uh, and then in deep meditation, the universe was sort of telling me, because that's not what I want you to do. And I said, okay, well then, now I'm not literally saying this, it's a feeling. I said, okay, if, if you don't want me to write this book, then what do you want me to do? And again, it says not literally words, it's a feeling. And the universe sort of replied to me, I want you to start a new YouTube channel about gardening. I thought, what? Start a YouTube channel about gardening? Uh, and so I digested that for a little bit. And then all of a sudden it became crystal clear to me. Okay, I guess I'm just going to not write that book anymore. And instead I'm going to start a, gar a channel about, um, gardening, a, a new YouTube channel about gardening, because that's what I'm motivated to do. That's the key. The universe was m giving me incredible motivation to start a new YouTube channel about gardening. And so as soon as I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to do it. And so, uh, boom, I started that channel and immediately it took off and it's garden like a Viking. It immediately took off and I'm deeply motivated and inspired to do everything related with that. Um, so this is the key guys. Once you uh, create that vision, once you are 
have done enough in life that for sure your uh, motiv your uh, imaging that you can trust the universe, then you can just go for it. You can just go for it. Uh, what is everyone talking about? What happened to Lita? Ooh, yes. Lita says, uh, daughter passed away six years ago. I realized I didn't know a dang thing. Gardening, the only thing brought me sort of back, still struggle. Yes, my friend, definitely. We feel you. We've had a lot of loss. You know, a lot of people have had loss in this community. Um, yes. And so, and so we, we will, uh, we will look deeply within and we will trust the universe and we will say, okay, if I'm not motivated to do what I think I'm supposed to be doing with the conscious mind, what do you want me to do then? What am I to do? And, uh, then we will do what we are motivated to do. And it's for a reason. It is because the universe always puts you in that situation, which is most conducive to your awakening. And so you have to find what is, uh, what is motivating me and do that. But you can only trust this once you've done the detoxification process, the deprogramming process, because until then, it's going to be things like, what am I motivated to do? I'm motivated to remodel my kitchen or get a, get a new car or do, do something that's buying stuff and spending and getting me deeper into debt and, and, you know, turning the wheel for the man. These are things that you'll be motivated to do uh, if you're still in the programming, definitely. Spend money, uh, work more uh, uh, in the machine, all of this, you will be motivated to do that. And then you'll be wondering like, why am I not motivated to go to work for 12 hours? Or why am I not motivated to create 12 sources of passive income and all of this kind of thing? It's because that's not what, maybe that's not what the universe has got in store for you. It's something else. So you have to go within and listen and say, okay, well, what am I motivated to do? And if you're not motivated to do anything, it's because you need a detox. You need a detox. You need to find, you need to recalibrate your purpose. And once you do that, then, then you can live by the motto, done is better than perfect. Remember that guys, done is better than perfect. When it comes to almost anything except like brain surgery, done is better than perfect. Brain surgery has got to be perfect, you know, but very few things in life need to be perfect. And so, so many people are sitting there with the hamster wheel in their mind going over and over and over, concerned that it's not going to be perfect, uh, that, that they're not going to be able to do it perfectly, and they're overanalyzing when what they need to do is just get it done. Just get it done, okay? And you'll learn. You'll learn. Um, also, a quote from the late Bob Proctor. He says, uh, in order to have energy to do the thing that you want to do, you have to begin doing the thing. And then it compounds on itself. So in order to have the energy to do it, you have to begin doing it. So um, it, it's multifaceted. Do you see how we have to go to the core? We have to recalibrate our uh, image of the ideal life. And we have to cut off the programming that is happening. And then we can trust in the process. It is a process, not a destination. And so we say, okay, well, I'm going to find out what am I motivated to do? And then once I start feeling those little, those little whispers of motivation, then you can fan that flame and just start doing it. Just start doing it. You have to get the thought process out of the way at that point, because overthinking things is one of the greatest, um, is one of the greatest hindrances. We call that analysis paralysis, overanalyzing things until the point where we are just paralyzed. And so you just begin doing it and trust the process that you will learn during the journey. Shawnee says, I'm working on decluttering our home, finding a balance with a morning routine. 
that's been helping me get my brain to turn back on. Definitely. So w once we've gone to the core and, and we've done those things that we were talking about, uh, then you can really get motivated to get motivated. You can really trust where the motivation is coming from at that point because it's not their programming for you. It's your own. It's the universe's ultimately. It's the higher programming. And so then you have to use little tactics like um, utilizing the time in the morning. The morning is very, very important because of the brainwave state, uh, uh, the, wa the, uh, the wave state of the brain. And so we need to uh, utilize that as a great gift. And so straight away in the morning, do the things, develop a morning routine. The mornings are so important. Now, a lot of people I know, the, the, their lifestyle is such that they just have to wake up and immediately go to work for somebody. But um, if, you, if your life is, is arranged in such a way that you can flow more and you can listen more to what the universe is directing you to do, utilize the gift of the morning and get it done. Just get it done and see and observe how good you feel and quiet the thinking mind. Quiet the thinking mind because it, it will keep you from actualizing your potential. It will keep you in a state of paralysis if you're overthinking. And so um, another good one, uh, Shawnee, yes, declutter. Guys, you have to detoxify your mind and body, uh, but also your, your space, your environment, because it is uh, very difficult to have a sense of peace when you have sheer chaos in your environment. Now, it works both ways though. The external is a reflection of the internal. So people that you see that have like a, a hoarder, you know, they're like hoarders and just stacks of stuff and garbage and just really unbelievable clutter, that is a reflection of their internal state. That is a reflection of their mental state. Absolutely, 100%. Uh, so you have to go within and you have to purify. And then the external, you will be motivated to clean things up. You'll just be motivated to do it. You'll be driven for a different purpose. And it's all about going with that. So 208 Roots says, Nate, what are your thoughts on having many things that motivate you where you are torn between projects, creating a struggle to focus because so many possibilities and you are motivated to do all. Yes, I feel you. I definitely feel you there. Once you get the enthusiasm, the enthusiasmo, yeah, the spirit, the divine spirit within you, that's what enthusiasm really means. Uh, and so once you get the enthusiasm, then comes the thing of how to direct it because you will be so enthused about life, about so many things. Passion will start flowing through you and you'll be enthused to do and to create and to accomplish. And then it becomes a thought of, okay, well, all these things I want to do, which one do I do? Again, get out of the way. Get out of the way and say, at first, before the full shift in, a, in perspective, before the full transition happens, you can speak to something. You, you can say, you know, okay, what do you really want me to do? What, what, what actually needs to be done? What do I need to do now the most? And become quiet to receive the answer. Uh, of course, down the line, you won't need to have that dialogue because it's all one. And, and so you will just feel, you will just feel the energy and the cosmos will tell you instantaneously what you need to do and know. It's the heart energy. There won't need, there's no dialogue at that point. But, um, so you have to say, okay, what, needs done the most and always keep in mind the image of the ideal higher self. Now, for some people, that's going to be you uh, running a successful business or having kids that are healthy and, and strong and, and uh, thriving in their life, you know, and your eyes are clear and healthy. All of this you have to see in the same image. It's all part of the same image and you have to repeat it to the mind over and over and over and it works. And once the subconscious takes hold of that image, you will begin to actualize, to materialize that in your life. You will be led to do little things that might not make sense to you, but your, the heart energy is guiding you to do it. 
and t- in hindsight, we can see. In hindsight, we can see. Like, for example, when I was motivated to stop writing the book, when I was struggling to write that book and just like, oh, man. But I was extraordinarily motivated to start some brand new YouTube channel making garden videos. I didn't understand that. I didn't understand why or, or anything. But then straight away, it was like, oh, okay. So this makes sense now. Uh, and, and then it just compound. And then now here we are. It's like my full-time profession. And it's only growing more and more and more. And then it opens up whole new channels, whole new relationships with people, whole new opportunities, whole new uh, creative avenues and outlets, whole new purposes. And it's all directing you towards that image in the mind. Yes, yes, yes. Blue Wolf says, first we have the dream or the idea. Then we figure out how physically to make it happen. Then we do it. Then we celebrate the dream becoming, coming into reality. Yes, this is how it happens. This is how it works. Yes, Miss KC says, that's on my list this week. Spring cleaning, decluttering, minimizing. Definitely, uh, yeah. That's something that I used to struggle with, but I definitely don't anymore, not to any, any um, degree. But back when I was in a very chaotic mental state, my environment reflected that always, and it was chaos. It was chaotic. You can tell a lot about a person's internal landscape by looking at their environment, their external like uh, environment. So... Yes. And so guys, about the motivation, we need to, once we determine the purpose, then uh, the, the things will become clear. We let the heart energy guide us and we don't become hung up with the process. We don't say, well, that's not, that's not how I want it to happen or that's not how I thought it was going to happen. So I need to force it to happen another way. Not necessarily. You can just flow with it. You can just open up your heart energy and flow and you will be guided. You will be guided. But on a physical level, motivation, a lot of people that feel lack of motivation are toxic uh, chemicals in the body. So we need to detoxify the mind and the body and to become very conscious of what you put into the body and to uh, do things. But, but see, all, all of this is ir- not irrelevant, but all of this is um, secondary because once you get the spirit in you, you will be guided, you will be led and motivated to do the right things that will bring you purity of mind and body. You'll be led to the master cleanse, for example. You'll be led to uh, getting purified water into your life, drinking lots of good quality water. You'll be led to cold training, to sauna therapy. You'll be led to breath work. You'll be led to growing your own food so that you're eating nutrient-rich produce. You'll be led to eating raw beef liver, raw bone marrow, uh, bone broth, all of these kind of things you'll be guided towards because that is actualizing the image. You are a creative force in the world and you are always creating whether you realize it or not. You're always creating. So we have to go within and we have to see what am I creating? So, hmm. yes, Kenny Green says, motivated to get my seeds going, rebuild the 12 by 10 grow room, just finished, very motivated. Yes, and it's a wonderful feeling. Guys, once we start living like this, it all compounds on itself and it just becomes easier and easier. And so to the point where now, oh, you just feel motivated in general for life, positive, motivated and then when something comes in you okay you can do it you tackle the project not a problem because you're feeling good you're feeling healthy because you're eating the right things you're getting plenty of sleep you're getting good quality sleep you have uh, you've removed or let go by the wayside the relationships in your life that are draining the energy from you you've expelled the toxic uh, energy vampires from your life yes you've stopped dispersing your energies all over the place That's another very important one that I see all the time. Uh, Remember this. I say this all the time, but remember this visualization. Uh, If you put a pile of gunpowder on the ground and you light it 
it goes up crazy, yeah. And all that energy just goes all over the place and nothing really happens. But if you take that same, same exact quantity of gunpowder and focus its energies through the barrel of a cannon, now all of a sudden it's got unbelievable uh, potential to boom, to do something. But it's all about focusing the energies. And so for a lot of you, uh, you your energies are all over the place. And nothing ever seems to get accomplished because it's not focused properly. So once you have all the energy and motivation and drive, then it's focusing it, eliminating the distractions and focusing it through the power of the mind. Graham says, my dad used to say, love many, trust few, and always paddle your own canoe. Definitely. Definitely. That's a good saying. I like it. Yes. Kenny Green says, don't kick down doors. The ones that need opened will open. Open doors lead us to the creator. Yes. That's a good way to put it. Because ultimately, it's saying the same thing as infinite spirit goes before me and opens the way. Infinite wisdom tells me what to do and what to say. So it's all about repetition, guys. You just uh, need to repeat this. It's, it's that easy. I, I know it just seems like it couldn't possibly be that easy, but we are so fortunate to be in this human form where we can direct these energies. You have unlimited creative potential within you. And so learning how to work with the energy is everything. Blue Wolf says, I am motivated every Monday morning to connect with all of you lovely people. Definitely. So am I. Very motivated. B. Hendrick says, I am a constant projector of creativity. Yes, it's a wonderful feeling. Uh, Spencer Mountain says, life as a work of art, curating your space, your habits, your interests into your masterpiece. Yes, yes. Uh, Teresa says, how do we release energetic vampires that are family? That almost deserves its own talk. We could talk about that next time. Definitely. So guys, I hope that you got something from that. Uh, it, it might've been a little all over the place. It just, that's such a deep topic. It's so multifaceted and you have to go to the root. You can't just say, Okay, well, drink more coffee and then you'll be motivated or, or do, you know, really everything else is just superficial compared to what is the image that is in the mind. That is everything. If you're not sure what image is in the mind, then you need to spend more time in meditation, observing, observing what images are coming up recurring in your mind and where would they have come from? Are they something you actually experienced in life? For most people, guys, for most people that are television and movie watchers, they th their mind doesn't re remember the brain doesn't really know the difference between an image it sees on the screen and what it sees in real life. It's all just on the screen of your experience. So the brain, uh, m most people have memories of things that happened that never happened. They were movies. So uh, that's one of the tools that they use to, to help uh, manipulate the, the masses for sure is if you need to mask something uh, in the psyche, the number one way to mask over something in the human psyche is to make a movie about it. And so it, it blurs the images and the way that the mind stores it. When you research this stuff, guys, it goes so deep, it's unbelievable. And, and so the images, uh, um, many people have memories that, or, or things that they think they experienced, but they never did. And these images will come up in the mind. Hmm? Think of like, uh, okay, how do you have images of being deep in a coal mine and having it collapse and, and seeing coal mine workers, you know, struggling to breathe un, un, underneath the ground? How, how would you have any images or, or recollection of any of that? You've seen it in movies. You've, you've seen it. And the body re responds to the stimuli as well. It's just, <laughs> it's multifaceted, guys. It, it's, uh, it's, all, it's all one. So, yes, so maybe we should do, I'm not sure if I can talk, uh, well, probably, uh, hence the yo-yo feelings of motivation. Yes, go within, 
Go within, my friend. Uh, ooh, muddy paws. Yeah, and sabotage the good things we do. Definitely. Uh, yeah, I should have talked. See, we need like another half hour to talk about sabotaging. I know. Because uh, that can come down. The reason that people are self-sabotaging, you see it all the time because of their mind, uh, the belief pattern that is in their mind. So, so many people uh, believe that it's their, their um, belief pattern that they're operating from. So a lot of people might have the belief, maybe it's subconscious, but they will believe, um, my kids don't respect me. Okay, that's a big one. My kids don't respect me. So if that's their belief, then in their mind, the law of confirmation will apply always because it's a law. And so you will do things that will lead you to confirm that belief. And we will call that self-sabotaging. So the remember, the law of confirmation doesn't have any allegiances. It doesn't work in a positive way only. It works both ways. It's just confirming because remember, all things are actually neutral. It is only the human mind that infuses it with a temporary concept of meaning, of good or bad. So the law of confirmation is not about only bringing positive things into your life unless you you make it that way. Uh, and so if someone has the belief, my kids don't respect me, then they will be motivated and driven to do things that will confirm that. And we'll call that self-sabotaging. When you have an appointment uh, uh, w with your kids or when you have to do something with them or something, you blow it off or something else comes up or something and you disappoint them and see they don't respect me. This is how it works, guys. <laughs> This is what self-sabotaging is. It is just, again, the law of confirmation. We're just calling it self-sabotaging. You have to go within and see what programs are you operating under. Ooh, Spray Can Art says, self-sabotage is a way to control the outcome as well. Absolutely. It is a way to control the outcome, to confirm, and I will say to confirm the belief pattern that is in the mind. It all comes back to that. Yes. So, um, okay, guys, let's see here. What should the uh, topic be for next week? What should the topic be for, for next week? Um, oh, man, Graham, you ain't kidding, says the movie Jaws did wonders for sea swimmers. Dude, when I was teaching scuba diving in Thailand, that people still talked about how the movie Jaws destroyed the scuba diving industry when it came out. And absolutely, uh, <laughs> the image in the mind. Um, Miriam Meadows says, is it similar with books or is that less concerning? Uh, actually, books can be equally as powerful, uh, if not more sometimes, because we are creating the image in the mind. Think about, I mean, if you're a big fiction reader, definitely th this can be, this can be. Um, if, if you're a big fiction reader, so yes, because it's all has to do with the image in the mind. So if you are reading a book and you've got this whole phantasmal thing that's happening in the mind, um, these images are going into the mind. Yes. If, if you are reading uh, romance novels and stuff with a ton of drama in it and things, people that read romance novels uh, have a lot of drama in their life. There's no other way about it. Or they have some disappointment. It just, it all confirms. And so it's like people that watch uh, soap operas, they always have drama in their life. And they'll be the first ones to tell you, I'm not about drama. I don't want, nope, I don't do drama. Anyone that says that is a drama maker. You can rest assured, anyone that says that. Uh, and so, yes, books can be the same. You have to be choosy with what books that you read You have um, if you want to consciously uh, direct your life. So we read books that will give us knowledge or books that will paint the right picture in the mind that will show us something. Yes. Um, because reading things like romance novels or just like mindless kind of fiction is not really any different than just watching television in, in many ways. It's still better than television, of course. Um, so...
Uh, Blue Wolf says, how to decipher between a yes or a no when we choose to do something? Ooh, this is a good question. Yes, very much uh, uh, sort of what we talked about last week. Yeah, we could definitely get deeper into that. Um, Pam says, there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Shakespeare said this. Yes, this is the ultimate truth. The sum total of all things is zero, guys. It is uh, inherently There is no meaning, which is a huge thing, a huge hurdle at first in the awakening process to digest. So, whoa, 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 whoa. it's like spiritual vertigo your whole life. You you thought everything had meaning to it. But when you begin the process, uh, you see that all meaning is arbitrary and has only been applied. It's been infused by the human mind. And, and so it's, uh, (laughs) <laughs> that was a big thing for me, trying to navigate. How, how do you navigate a world that has no meaning? How, how do you feel hope? How do you feel love? How do you feel a world that has no meaning to the ego mind is, is just horrendous, is the worst possible thing you can imagine. And it's just depressing. And, and there's, no, there's no motivation. Talk about no motivation. If nothing has any meaning, how, how am I ever going to be motivated? That was tough to digest at first. But then... Once the shift happened and you get on the other side of it, all of a sudden it's the most beautiful thing you could ever imagine. Everything suddenly becomes in, has a profound meaning to it. That is no meaning that it just, it's totally completely different reversal way of living, but everything only now do things have deep, real feeling to it. It's just so much more vivid. Life is so much more vivid and magnificent. So, so guys, what is the topic for next week? Let us know. PA, good to see you, my friend. It's been a long time, I think, huh? Um, so what is the uh, topic for next week? Miriam says, ha ha, no romance novels for me, but I want, I, uh, I want through a crime thriller stage and had to cut out for this reason. Absolutely guys. Crime thrillers are one of the, the biggest offenders. <laughs> people that are deeply paranoid, uh, uh, as well and deeply suspicious of other people. And, you know, oftentimes have things happening in their life that, uh, so are people that are watching crime television all the time. That is one of the worst things you can do for the mind, for the health of the mind. And crime novels and all of this stuff, oh, who killed who, and all these horrific things that people do. Oh my goodness. Uh, We gotta get that out of our life. That's a very toxic thing. I'm sorry, if you're into that, okay, you have to understand or go within and, and find your motivations. Why are you into that? Why do you need to hear about who tortured who? That's weird. And, and that's not healthy for anyone. And that doesn't help to, to um, stop the proliferation of that kind of, of uh, darkness. So we need to get that out of the collective psyche altogether. This is very important. Um, so Paul Perm says topic, A- AI? AI. Is that a topic? Let's see. Um, something about how to gain willpower besides just do it to gain willpower besides just do it. (laughs) Right. I know. Um, Ms. KC right there. Yeah. Says, yes, I binged watch old seasons of survivor during the lockdown and it kind of messed with my mind watching these people backstab each other. Absolutely guys, this is how it works. This is why these shows are pumped out to us. Soap operas, the real housewives of this or that place. And all of this, you know, Jersey shores was like one of the first one. Do you remember road rules back in the nineties, MTV and all that? Um, all that stuff is total garbage and it is point is put out for the sole purpose of degrading society of degrading the mind of making people bicker and bitch and complain and, and backstab and do all kinds of, of, uh, uh, trifling little things to each other. That's exactly what it does because that's the image in the mind. It all has to do with that. 
that's what they're motivated to do. But people that, that they're not even observing this, they don't even understand that this is happening. It's just, they're just driven to do these things, to be emotional about this and that, and to backstab each other and to be all about drama because they are watching these shows and it goes into the subconscious and they have, they have no defense. Mm hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Sophia Renee, you are tripping me out, brother. No thing has meaning. I know. I know. Let that digest for a little while, guys. I don't know if you're ready for that yet, but that, that we almost, you know, yeah. Just let it digest. Um, so, okay. It's part of, so. Aaron Johnson says, Spencer, I like fantasy as well. Things like Outlander. Yes, fantasy. So many people liking this. Good, f good uh, food, health equals mental health. Absolutely. This is a good one. Um, let's see here. Okay, guys, I'm not able to settle on the topic yet for next week, but we'll just have to come up with something. So... Um, Miriam says, real world is what I thought being a grown-up was going to be like. Yeah, I know. Uh, man, I used to watch, uh, back in the day, yeah, we used to watch shows. Used to watch, um, they were on like one night, you know, Party of Five. And then, we, then we'd watch Ally McBeal. And so, I mean, all that nonsensical garbage. And people, the law of confirmation is always working. It always applies. This is why it's so important to uh, only consume wholesome things that you want to see in life. Ooh, VA Green, that's pretty good. Codependency would be a great topic. Ooh, yeah. Okay, we might do codependency next week. This is very important. Um, ooh, yeah, Spencer Mountain, self-sabotage could be next week continuation. Yeah. I mean, what do you think about that? Because we didn't really get to dive into self-sabotage and what it really is. Uh, so we could do that, yes. How to conserve and focus our energy. Okay, I like this one. How to conserve and focus the energy. Definitely, we can do that. Okay, we're getting some good ones. These are all really good. Um, so we'll do all of them in time. Um we might do a self-sabotage or a uh, conserve and focus energy because it is so relevant. Codependency, we will do uh, later with the energetic vampire one, okay? So, okay, guys. Well, uh, guard, okay, Teresa says, guard against bad energies, codependency, and vampires. Oh, yeah, so many good things. Hello, Mountainside Homestead. Good to see you. So, okay, guys. Well, uh... This has been good. This has been great. Thank you all for your participation. Thank you for being here. I love, I mean, I really look forward to Monday mornings. Uh, these are wonderful. So I appreciate you guys. And I will see you right here next week at uh, the same time. And uh, I'll put the topic out here in a few days. Yeah. Um, Blue Wolf says, it is so wonderful to see all the views on the garden channel. It has taken off like the garlic in my yard. Yeah, I know. That last video I made is like 50,000 views already in just a couple days. So that's pretty good for, for that channel. So it's getting that time, guys. So yes, I'm about to go out into the yard and uh, begin the more planting anyways. So, okay, my friends. Infinite spirit goes before me and opens the way. Infinite wisdom tells me what to do and what to say. Infinite spirit goes before me and opens the way. Infinite wisdom tells me what to do and what to say. Infinite spirit goes before me and opens the way. Infinite wisdom tells me what to do and what to say.